In this video, I'll go a little more into why we care so much about systems of differential equations and how we can use them to help us analyze other types of problems. So there's a few reasons, really two main ones, why we care so much about systems. So the first is that it's pretty much never the case that only a single thing is changing at a given time. Right, if we talk about our population models, right, if you're thinking about bacteria in a dish, then sure, maybe it's the case that there's only the one thing changing at a time. But in any more involved than anything outside of nature, there's the population that you're worried about, and then there's like, you know, predators, and there's prey populations, and there's food resources, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on that's all changing at the same time. And if we want to get an accurate model of what's going on here, we have to take all of these into account. So systems let us deal with multiple changes that are interacting with each other and build that interaction into our model, and then we can use that to actually see what's going to happen over time. So instead of having to like arbitrarily assign some value to how some rate affects the problem, we can actually just incorporate that right into the model and then get something that's more accurate to what's going to happen with this actual system. The second reason for this is for numerical methods. And the point here is that Euler's method and any of our other numerical methods only work for first order equations. There's no method for second order or third order or fourth order Euler's method. It just doesn't work. Like there's no method for that but they will also work for first order systems. And so if we can find a way to write a higher order equation, like I say a third or fourth order equation as a first order system, then we can apply Euler's method to that system and get the result that we want for the equation. And thankfully, there's a pretty standard approach for converting a higher order equation into a first order system, which we'll see via this example here. We have y double prime plus t squared y prime minus e to the t y equals sine of t, y of 0 equals 3, y prime of 0 equals 1. We want to convert this to a first order system and it's a value problem. Now the key thing that we're going to need to work this out is we're going to have to add components to this system to make it work. And the general rule here is that for an nth order equation, it's going to become an n component system. For first order equations, we already are first order. We don't need to add more components to make it a first order object. It already is that. For an nth order equation, we're going to need n components. And how do we pick these? Well, we let our first component, which I'll call x here for the sake of contrasting variables, we'll let x, our first component, be just our normal unknown function y. So x1 is just y, our first component of our solution is just y, it's the unknown function from above, and every one after that is the derivative of the one previous. So a second order equation, I'm going to stop at x2 being y prime. Now I want to figure out what differential equations do these x1 and x2 satisfy. Let's start with x1. What is x1 prime? It should be a first order equation, so let's start with first order. x1 prime is going to be the derivative of y, which is y prime, but based on how we defined our x2, that is just x2. So x1 prime is x2. Right, I want to get these to be all in terms of the x's so I can write it all as one system at the end of the day. Now what about x2 prime? Well, x2 prime is going to be y double prime. But now y double prime, if I look back at my equation, I can solve out for y double prime here, right? I can solve this out and move all the terms to the other side of the equation, and that's the point of this being a second order equation is where you have to find our equations to be ones where we can always solve out for the highest order derivative. So I can solve out for y double prime here and get that this should be sine of t minus t squared y prime plus e to the ty. And I can convert y prime and y back into x's because of how I've defined my two variables up here. So y prime is just x2 and y prime is x1, meaning this becomes sine of t minus t squared x2 plus e to the t x1. So in a sort of matrix type form, I get that my x1, x2 prime is gonna be just x1 prime, x2 prime, is going to be x2 and then sine of t minus t squared x2 plus e to the t x1. And now we notice here that this system is linear because the x is only multiplied by functions of t. They're not times each other, so I can write this in a more direct matrix form if I split the different terms. So in that case, I would get something like x1, x2 prime equals 0 and sine of t for the terms that don't have x's in them, plus a 1 and a minus t squared times an x2, plus a 0 e to the t times x1, or I can put this in an actual matrix form, x1, x2 prime equals 0, e to the t, 1 minus t squared, 
times x1, x2 plus 0 and sine of t. And I can replace these by x if I want to write in vector form as x prime is 0, 1, e to the t minus t squared times x plus our vector 0, sine of t. Now note this last part of going to a matrix down from the original vector form up here only worked because the equation was linear. If it was not linear, an answer left like this is your best you can do and you leave it like this. If it's linear, and that the terms here are all linear sort of setups like they are, you can split it up more like this. Now the last bit to consider is how does the initial condition factor into this? Our initial condition was that y of zero is three, y prime of zero is one, but if we look at our definition for x1 and x2, exactly these two functions here. So these conditions here tell me that x1 of 0 should be 3 and x2 of 0 should be 1 or the vector x at 0 should be 3 and 1. So that's why we care so much about systems and the idea of how you can convert a higher order equation into a first order system which then will allow it to be applied to things like numerical methods and other types of analysis based on first order approaches to things.